This is my desk setup. I know, it's pretty ugly. So in today's video, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna make myself a new sitting standing desk that has an extending waterfall edge. So let's go. I don't have a joiner or big planner in my shop, but that did not stop me from trying to get these five quarter alder boards square enough to make a tabletop. Using my track saw, I cut one side of the board straight to give me a straight edge on each board. I can then take them over to my small Dewalt planer and get a flat face and get them down to an inch and a quarter thick. The idea for this desk was to have a waterfall edge from the top of the desk down the sides to the floor. In order to have a top long enough that I can miter to get a waterfall edge, I need to glue some boards together to get a 10 foot long top. I almost wanted to cut out this part of the video completely because it was probably the worst attempt of joining two boards together and I know it was dumb of me to even attempt to make it work this way. Using my dual spindle dowling joiner, I drilled four dowels to help me connect two pieces of wood. And since I did not have long enough clamps, my idea was to use pocket holes to bring the two boards together while the glue dried. In my head, this all makes sense, but in reality, this was awful. First off, my dowels did not line up and the boards were not perfectly aligned. Second, the pocket hole screws did not work as intended and did nothing to bring the two boards together. For some reason, I decided to move forward and glue everything up into a big tabletop, adding extra glue to fill any gaps because I knew there was going to be gaps. All right, so after taking the top off the clamps, I realized that it is a piece of there's just gaps everywhere. The boards don't line up. It's not flat. It's probably one of the worst tops I've ever done. I'm going to scrap this and I'm gonna go with something that I know is flat and has no gaps. Good old reliable plywood. The plywood I'm going to be using is pre-finished five x five sheet of Faltec Birch. This is the only type of plywood I could find in five x five in my area. I cut the five x five sheet and plywood in half using my track saw. And since the edges of the plywood look like they've been bashed in with a hammer, I cut a clean new edge over at my table saw. Instead of doing the traditional 90 degree waterfall edge, I'm going to spice it up a little bit with a curved edge. In order to achieve a curved edge on my plywood, I'm going to be using a technique I've done plenty of times before called curve bending. I printed out a template and marked my curve cuts on my piece of plywood. I'll leave a link to the website I used to find my curve spacing down below in the description. Instead of using a table saw or a router to make my curve cuts, I used a track saw. The piece of plywood is too big for the table saw and I did not want to use the router with the V-shaped bit because I'm going to hide that plywood edge with a hardwood edge. So you will never see the curve cuts anyways. I should mention that I'm building the desk in two halves due to the size of the plywood and the size of the desk. This will also allow me to cut my curve cuts on both my halves at the same time, ensuring they're located the same distance from the edge of the plywood. After cutting all of my curves, I noticed that the plywood was not bending as much as I needed it to. I lined my plywood back up and added one more curve. This was enough to get that 90 degree bend that I was looking for. I needed to justify buying the CNC. So I made some 90 degree clamping squares with the same inner radius of the waterfall edge. This will help me hold the curve bend in place at 90 degrees while the glue dries. I gave it a good full day to dry and remove the clamps. I did get a little bit of spring back on the plywood when I released the clamps, but it was to be expected. Not a big deal. Okay, now that I have my two pieces for the desk, I need to figure out how I'm gonna go ahead and connect both of these together to make one long desk. The most reasonable option was a dual spindle dowling joiner. Just kidding, I'm actually gonna be using this half inch rabbiting bit to wrap it on the edges of the plywood here, and then using those rabbited edges to glue it together. After my first attempt, I still had a small lip where the two plywood sides meet, so I had to go back and remove just a little bit more to get it perfect. I had to get creative on how I could apply clamping pressure when I was gluing up the seams. I used blue painter's tape with CA glue to temporarily give me clamping points for this glue up. I also used my workbench dovetail clamps to apply downward pressure to the joint, and this worked extremely well. In order to cover the exposed sides of the plywood, I decided to use the alder I had scrapped earlier when I did a horrible job on the first tabletop. I cut down some two inch white strips over at the table saw 
and added a half inch dado on one of the sides. Again, I used a CNC to get this done, but it was faster to do them with a handheld router. The dados are offset just over 3 quarters of an inch on one side, and I'll explain what the dados are for in a little bit. With brad nails and clamps, I secured the hardwood edging to the legs until the glue dried, making sure the 3 quarter of an inch offset was on the plywood surface. I can then place another piece on top and trace out the shape of the tabletop. With the shape and size mark, I can then use my table saw to cut it to the right size and my jigsaw to cut out the curves on each end. Since the hardwood edging is 2 inches thick on the legs, I marked 2 inches offset following the curves I had just cut. Using the track saw for my straight cut and the jigsaw once again to cut off the excess. A little bit of cleanup on the inside edge with the spindle sander and the front edging was ready to get glued on. The dados on the inside of the hardwood edging are going to be holding a sheet of plywood. Since this is a sitting standing desk, it's not always going to be at the same height. And without these extra plywood sides, the desk will look awful when the desk is raised for standing. I cut the plywood piece just undersized to add a thin hardwood edge, and it would still be loose enough for it to slide. There was still a small lip on the hardwood edging, so I had to do some cleanup with the flush trim bit to get it just perfect. I stood inside the desk so I would be protected if the bit decided to end its career. As a finishing touch, I gave all the edges a small round over as well. After some sanding, I applied three coats of Danish oil to the hardwood edging, and man did it make the other pop. At this point, the desk is pretty much complete, except for the frame that will make this a sitting standing desk. That is where the sponsor of this video comes into place. Facebo sent me their Aguera 3 stage frame for this build. With the original idea of the tabletop being a 1 inch thick solid wood, I knew it was going to be a heavy top, and the Aguera 3 has a 275 pound weight capacity. Also, the Aguera 3 has height adjustment ranging from 24.4 inches to 49.6 inches, which is suitable for all adults, even as tall as 6 foot 4 inches, and children under 5 feet. The assembly and installation of the frame was pretty straightforward, following the instructions. Currently, Facebo is having a Black Friday sale running from November 10th to November 30th, and if you use code JARMADE at checkout, you could get an additional 5% off. A big thank you to Facebo for sponsoring this video. Things will not always go according to plan, and that's fine. You can decide to give up, or you can improvise and make the best of it. I'm glad my first tabletop didn't work out, because I ended up with this new curved waterfall edge. Honestly, this desk represents me, and if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that most of my builds revolve around bending wood. So if you want to see more wood bending projects, check out this video.